I get the cheat code, I'm a beast They should've never let me out of lease Stop out of cap, I'm just tryna see You really back what you talk on the beat They put me in, I'ma walk on the beat I eat my plate and it make me obese I been pushing lyrics like a kingpin And when the day we got no reason What's up, what's up? Hello, baby one time for your shirt, Kingpin. Two times for the uh, Hyro Day. Yeah. Three three eyes. Like, what's the what's yeah. the what's it's the shirt? Hieroglyphics. It's the logo. First of all, they're an Oakland team, so you got to catch the subliminals. Okay. Yeah. So these are the Oakland colors. All colors, facts. They had like four or five. We just came back from Hyro Day. Shout yep, out to yep, Hyro yep, Day. Yep, DJ yep. Tori Hieroglyphics. Saw that on there. They had like on five the or six different merch shops. Dope. And they had different T-shirts set up at different spots. Yeah. I thought it was really really cool, but. The thing with this T-shirt is it's it's something they've been branding for like twenty some odd years. Yeah, mm. this logo didn't just mysteriously pop. I love the colorway, blue, and they had them in blue and white. You know, Jalen got a whole bunch of them. Uh, shout out to New Boy, our our, our videographer from Atlanta went to Oakland fucking and Oakland, planted his fucking roots. Who the fuck? Yeah, yeah. He went with a whole yeah. bunch of Atlanta clothes. I, I, and came saw, back I, with I a whole heard bunch about him in the group clothes. chat. He did yeah. a good job. He's wearing he an Oakland shirt job, now, man. And and you know what? I say all that to say this is that being able to take this shirt. From the streets of Oakland, bring it to the streets of Atlanta, and then wear it on the podcast for the people that watch the show, is probably one of the greatest indicators of how effective marketing is. Yeah, it worked. Yes, what they did with the logo thirty yes. years ago worked so it much still so works. that yes. it influenced a hip hop head to spend their hard earned money, bring it back across the country, and then now give it to us so that we can show it on a platform and encourage people to go to the high road day. Shop and hieroglyphics and buy merch. Exactly. I was saying uh, off camera that uh, it reminded me of one of the mo best marketing uh, emojis was with the young dro best thing smoking with the with the teeth and the smile. That was mm. probably my favorite uh, marketing campaign for an artist. For a t-shirt for, for a debut a album. Where you guys remember uh, what's his name? Um, who the fuck is that dollar? What is his name? Dollar. Was that wasn't that his name? The kid that had the song. Yeah. Who the fuck is that? That's T Pain on the hook though, right? Right. Yeah. Anyways, I can't remember though, but yeah. When this, it was the Ozone Awards. It was the last Ozone Awards in Miami. Damn, and I remember to me, that. it was the funkiest still to this day. Those were stopped. fun. They were fun. They gave out, it was a wrapped brick of money. It was shrink wrapped. It was the $100 bill on there, and it had the wrap on there with his name. But when you opened it up, it was the T-shirt that was folded up and pressed in the shape Brilliant. Of a fucking hundred dollar bill. Like a stack. So they had a they had a t-shirt, a 3X t-shirt the size of a hundred dollar bill. Yeah. But it looked like it was a stack of money. That's dope. And it's still to this day, I, I think so that was the that. most clever marketing because anybody they walked up and threw it to would like, <gasps> yes. oh, bitch. Like another and one. And you that still was, remember it. Yes. Another yeah. one that was awesome, but it wasn't a t-shirt was when Future did Birthday Bash and they had the, shout out to show business them guys, they had the six pallets of hundred dollar bills of Future money. And when Future performed, they threw out all this fake money. People were grabbing it and yeah. shit, thinking it was real money, but it was Future bucks. So that's another one that stuck with me Brilliant. so much so that I still have. Brilliant. I still have, you know, like a hundred thousand dollars of Future bucks in the house. I get inspired by uh, dope Pajama. marketing ideas. I love it. I get super inspired. Inspired. Uh, are you guys ready? Yeah. Okay. Can you guys describe a fan? What is a fan? Who is a fan? How Fans important are people are they? that celebrate you in your victories, so they're only around when you're winning. That's a fan. Mm -hmm. What's a super fan? I think there, I was just going to say, I think there's two level of fans. There's the rabid fan, which is like the super fan. And then there's the fan. So a super fan is somebody that's going to support everything you do. They're going to come to your shows. They're going to buy your t-shirts. Think of the They're going to show love. Yeah. Think of the barbs. Yes. Barbs or the or, beehives. Or beehive. Christ. Yes. They're super, super fans. fans. Yeah. Those are super and then fans. the fans those are, are the cults. people. Are they cults? Yeah, I guess Hell maybe they yeah. are. I guess maybe they Talk are. Talk about say you can randomly tweet about Beyonce saying she's ugly. If you tweet right now, Beyonce is ugly, you're gonna get fifty thousand replies. It's people searching Beyonce hates to comment and troll you. Wow. That's a cult, my friends. I think that says more for Beyonce than it does for her fans, though. I think that's Beyonce, a psychological I think, But that fixation. only happens because they're getting what they want from their mother. <laughs> she talks to them She gives them the music Y'all not understanding this bro She's made this army You don't think she's built this army By giving yes. these people the music And <laughs> giving them surfboard And, 
and giving them <laughs> and water and lemonade them and, lemonade and talking to yes. them <laughs> and showing them a yes. different <laughs> aspect of it so yes. that now when you throw a stone at the crown, bitch, we all coming for you. As an artist, shouldn't that stone? be what you're trying to I believe build? people yes. will kill for Beyonce. I, 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 I hope they would. And That's Nicki the Minaj. Kind of fans that I want. I drop an album and it goes platinum That's off scary. my fans. Not the, the, na- new ones, the Navy too. The Rihanna ones. Navy too. She's a yeah. billionaire. Yeah. She's a billionaire. She drops panties, they sell out. She's a billionaire. Isn't that the goal? Yeah, that's the goal. Y'all just want to be cool. Oh, you don't even do this shit, bro. Fans. <laughs> I ain't no rapper. Fans. Don't nobody need no fans, bro. You know, I'm just young and thugging. I'm trying to get to the back. What? What? You need bands. You lost your fucking mind, bro. We yeah. had this conversation in California, and I hate to keep talking about Cali, but it's fresh on my mind. Fans only celebrate you in your victories. Forever celebrates you in your defeats. A super fan, you drop a good album or a bad album. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. They're they're changing their profile image. They're changing your picture. They're commenting. (coughs) They're sharing. They're making tweets. You're a fan. It drops cool. The next one who drops that's better. If you're a regular fan, you can you can slick you can slick unfan. If you're just a regular fan. So I, I. do you buy into that artist or are you are you a fan of the of their sound? Sounds come and go. Buying into that artist, like Lil Wayne fans. Lil Wayne fans are the ones that made Truck Fit as popular. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? It was those right. people that were growing yeah. with him that when he right. introduced it, Diddy, same thing with with uh, a Sean John and all that stuff. Those were bad boy fans that kind of grew with them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. G Unit Clothing. All of these guys had something and now it made it so so it appeared so easy that now everybody wants to have a t-shirt line. And everybody wants to have a sneaker line. Right. But nobody yeah. wants to sell it. I'm just going to design the fucking sneakers and put them online. I, me personally, buy a pair of the shoes that I'm trying to get somebody else to pay $150 for? Never. What do I look like? Some kind of fucking customer? I'm the <laughs> boss. I want you to think about how crazy that sounds that in this business, we'll get behind you as long as you're trying to figure it out. But once you got it figured out and it's perfected, oh, no, bitch, now I want it for free. Fuck you. You kidding me? You mean to tell me it took you 15 years to learn how to break records, Ferrari? And now that you know how to do it, you want to charge me money? Fuck that. I'm your friend, bro. Do it for me for free. I his, was willing to pay his you real friends you pay him. His real fans you. support him. Yeah, well, let's be but real. I think also business, people yeah. see a finished product and for some weird reason compare themselves to a finished product thinking they can just drop a random song like a Nicki Minaj can just drop a random song and it just go crazy. You can't do you that. You can't do that. Let me give you mm-hmm. a prime example. It takes marketing and promotion. Okay. And I took a deep dive on this deep-voiced young lady just yesterday. <laughs> deep-voiced young lady? Deep-voiced young lady just yesterday. <laughs> this deep-voiced young lady you has over the day. Go two ahead, and though. a half million Spotify followers. Okay. Okay. Deep-voiced lady. Okay. This deep-voiced young lady with one of the hottest songs in the country right now just oh, you're glowing to one of these most luxurious <laughs> and most popular record labels in the country. Okay. Two and a half million followers on just Spotify alone. Yeah. So if this person decided to sell one $20 t-shirt to 1% of her Spotify followers, she would generate one half of a million dollars. Yeah, fine, okay. There's no fucking store for merch linked to this motherfucker's website. Why would there be? Why would there be an opportunity for this young lady to make any money outside of the fucking show money? Because it's not a business to them, bro. Mm. there's nobody over there that is interested in making money. They're interested in being popular. Mm. Fuck your popularity. I'd rather be a rich nobody than broke with a name. Ooh, that's a t-shirt. <sighs> so, and you're correct, and, and I agree with you, but social media fucked that up as well, and I'm going to explain why. Please. It's attention. Likes and comments, for some people, they take that as currency now. Yes, Of course, you can monetize that, but just like you said, I can post, for example, a very beautiful lady can post a picture of a butt on the sink and some red lipstick and get a million likes. That will suffice her for at least 24 to 48 hours that she's not probably even going to think about making money. That will probably, that will fuck up her dopamine enough that she got a million likes and 20,000 comments. That would make her feel better than maybe mm. making $20,000. I'm but, probably exaggerating, but I'm because, just saying. And, and here, here we blame the people around them. Because if anybody around her had a half a brain and said, hey, Broad, why don't we sell, why don't we order 5,000 of these 
freaking panties from Alibaba, and then we're going to sell them <laughs> at $10 a wop to 1% of your 1 million likes. When they click on that goddamn picture and that shit says, do you want to see more? And when they click on more, it goes to the website where they got the tea bags for $10. 1% <laughs> of 1 million likes followers is going to give you, you know what enough you talk about. money. You know what you're talking about with the... You know what we're talking about. <laughs> yes. I'm talking about the tea bags and all that. Go all ahead. that good yes. shit. <laughs> all of this stuff will set it up. Could you imagine the conversation that's being had when you have the number one, one of the top records, let's say a top 10 record, and then you come in and your follow-up record is introduced at 27. Mm. But four days after you drop your follow-up record... Somebody at your label thought it would be a good idea to drop the remix with all of those artists on it. So much so that it, since it was never planned, that remix never made it to those other artists' pages. Newsflash, mm. it's not even on half of your profiles. Mm. Where is the money, Ferrari? Me, I'm going to answer, but let me backtrack. Uh, that same girl that is eager to put a butt on the sink and get those million likes, i tell you another thing. If it doesn't react how they want, they're going to delete it. Of course. But here's the beauty about the internet. And be upset about it. Once it's up, it'll never come down. You may have taken it off, but there was somebody that sat there and has <laughs> post notifications that every time you post, yeah. they get a notification. And guess what happens? You can delete the picture off your timeline. And I'm talking to you motherfuckers in case you didn't know. You can delete the picture off your timeline. But until I go in and refresh Fresh? my it's timeline. Still there. That motherfucker still sitting right there of course, for me of to course. screen grab, capture, screen of course. record, of course. share, put it on it's a Discord there. group. Of course. That's why it's, you got to be quick. It's not even a Even question. if you quick, it's, she. It's a question of you got to be in it to win it. The ones that are posting it up and taking it down, they don't have nothing tied into it. There's no T-shirts available. There's no merch. There's no call to action in the picture. The call to action is the picture. Right. So they, they're not in it for the business. I'm not talking to those people right. that are in it for the attention. I'm talking about the ones that are in it for the business. And when somebody has a top 10 record and makes a video of them signing a contract on a plane and goes halfway around the country and does oh, all of this shit to get their about. record to the next level. I know you But then when finally. you look into it, you look and you say, well, damn, bitch, how the fuck did y'all manage to do this one? Mm. You mean to tell me? Because I'm looking at it from a business side, because I'm on the side that has to deal with either other artists that are less talented or have less of a buzz, but want that same fucking result. They want that look. Because they don't see no merch. They don't see no bio. They right. don't see no links. They don't see no optimization. They see Say Cheese posting it, World Star Correct. posting it. They see the LA Leaker. They see a motherfucker reading a children's book. So they think that's <laughs> success. Yo, right. It may be success for them. Yeah. It baffled me because just yesterday, mm. I got on Twitter and seen said artist said, no matter how rich and famous I get, I will never leave Facebook alone. I don't even know how to use Twitter. But when you go to this motherfucker's pages, do you know what only two links are available and what one link is not available? There's no Facebook anywhere. But Twitter and Instagram, the one platform that she already admitted that she uses the most, loves the most, and engages with the most, her own team has eliminated her from that process. Because that isn't even a point of reference for mm. any of the music fans to click and go back with. God damn it. The music is only one fucking thing, bro. Yeah, agree. The music is what gets you the attention, B. Yeah, everything then else you go is... on and you fucking do uh, Independence Day a la Will Smith. Right. You go do the Four Brothers a la Tyrese. You go do Law and Order a la Ice-T. Don't forget Ice-T was a fucking cop killer. One of the most notorious cops in the world right now, bro. Music opens the door for you to get to the next level, man. And if you're not a business, you're always going to rely on the music. And you know what happens? You're not going to make hit records. No, because the music goes away. Record, bro. It comes and goes. It, music does it has go a life, it has a life cycle. And you don't want to evolve. You don't want to establish your infrastructure so the people that were with you from the beginning grow with you, a la Lil Wayne and Truck Fit, a la Beyonce and the Beehive. No, you just want it now. And if it doesn't work now, well, then fuck this shit. It's your fault, not mine. And that doesn't work like that. Not in this business. Mm. Any artist that doesn't have merch, to me, is pissing in the wind. You will sell 40 hoodies at $50 a piece and generate $2,000. Faster than you will make you will money generate streaming. a million streams yes. and make $2,000. Correct. That is a mathematical fact. Correct. You are afraid to hustle. Correct. And because you're afraid to hustle and you don't know how to hustle, you expect somebody else to do it for you. And that is where they lose me. That is where I get lost every single time. Because if I can get up in the morning, that was I can a real drag one right my fat ass out of bed every day and try to figure out how to be successful at the next level, then so can you. Absolutely. It's not hard. It's not. 
The, that's, I think we talked about it. The cheat yeah. code. You want to you know what the real cheat code is? Work. Do it. Work. Work. It's okay to make Work. mistakes. That's why they have erasers on pencils. It's okay to make mistakes, bro. <laughs> Crumble that bitch up, iron out a new one, and start fresh, man. <coughs> the sooner you can arrive at failure, the sooner you can start over again. It's prolonging that failure. Right. It's oh, Fail I don't, I don't, faster. Yeah, fail faster, fail man. So you can faster. figure out what works for you. Yes. And with merch, guess what? You can go to Google right now. Anybody watching this, Google Nike Air Max release dates. Google Yeezy release dates. Google Puma release dates. Google Jordan release dates. I just gave you colorways from now to the end of the year. You can drop your T-shirt with the same color pattern as the Jordans if you want to, bitch. They don't own blue and purple. You want to make you a logo T-shirt and take a picture of the sneakerheads and say, hey, Rari, I know you're going to get these. You may like this T-shirt, too. You will never fucking get a T-shirt sold to Rari because you will never fucking do that because you think black and white because it's the cheapest. No, bro. You mean to tell me you buying T-shirts and sitting on them and trying to sell them? What do you think you are, the dope man? That's why you end up smoking all the... Not a good weed, man, because you done bought the weed and smoked and it. Smoked you couldn't it. sell it. So now you're going to buy all these T-shirts and end up wearing them all. Yeah. Come on, man. Y'all hustling backwards, bro. It's 2022. You better figure it out, man. This shit <clears throat> is dead for real. Question of the day. Wendy Day. Oh, hell. Should an artist stay in the city they are from, or should they move to an Atlanta, New York, or Houston, or Miami, or L.A. for a better opportunity situation? That's B&B Rock. I bless the dead. He's from... Philadelphia, Philly. I'm by way of Atlanta, and lives in Los Angeles. You, you. I so know, you're gonna have to weigh in on this too. Um, it depends on the artist and where you're from, and whether you'd rather be a big fish in a small pond or a small fish in a big pond. I've seen so many artists move to Atlanta, thinking this is the land of milk and honey. And if you're not from here, it's really hard to get on here because there's no story, there's no background. It's really about the story and the connection you make with your fans. If you live in St. Louis and you can't create a fan base in St. Louis, what makes you think that you can move to New York or Miami and do the same thing? It's really about it's really about your hustle and your understanding of the music business to make it happen. It's not magically moving. Having said that, I moved from New York to Atlanta because the center of hip hop moved from New York to Atlanta. The industry is here. So the industry is here. Mm -hmm. so, but I did that when I was already Windy Day. I didn't build, I didn't move here cold and try to build a reputation here. I already had a reputation and moved. So I learned that because I was good at what I did where I was, I could go pretty much anywhere in the world and do what I do. But I chose the center. I chose the mecca of, of the music industry so that I could play a role in that, not so that I could make money. I happen to make money here. But I came here because I wanted to make a difference, not because I wanted to pimp the industry. Does that make sense? You, no. didn't, you didn't move here to make fans. Great. You, no. You, you moved here to establish business. People go to I moved the, here to help artists. Moved here really? This where the business is located, though. Yes. The, 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 it's the where people need me three most. hours away. You can jump right. on the car and go to the, every publishing company within three hours in Nashville, right. Publishers Row. Right. You can jump on a plane. It's a hub. You can fly to Miami in a couple hours. Absolutely. You can fly anywhere fly in the anywhere. country. Yeah. So, in essence, moving to Atlanta to build fans is the number one reason you won't. Correct. Moving to Atlanta to establish your business because you're closer to more recording studios than there may be in St. Louis. And there's you're more producers more DJs, here. More there's producers. more, yeah, there's more so opportunity. access to the industry, I definitely would say travel. Yeah. You don't have to move somewhere. You're going to have a hard time moving to, I came to Atlanta and I've been earning the respect that I get from, from Grady babies from the very first day that I got here. Right. And make no mistake about it, that if it's not for people like Black Bill Gates, Pretty Boy Tank, DJ Omizi, Southwest Atlanta, DJ Dirty, uh, uh, Tow Cars. Uh, uh, what's my man name that had the um, uh, the other radio show? Man, what's his name uh, from the uh, D4L? I forget his name right now. I lose me on top B, of my head. But uh, DJ Funky, yeah, Big X. Right. If you're not, if you don't have a working relationship with those guys as an industry professional, you ain't gonna be able to do shit. Yeah, it's number one. If you don't have a relationship with those guys and their community as an artist. 
they're playing for people from Atlanta. Yeah. They're not taking this shit and going to New York and playing it up there. So, you know, understanding that you'll never be the biggest man on your block until you're the man in your city, bro. The That's first right. thing somebody's going to ask you is, I'll give you a prime example. Funniest shit in the world. Probably going to be what we I usually just say. just in California. OG Mike Chaos was there, the dancing guy. Mm-hmm. And I heard an artist talking to him and say to him, I'm from Oakland. And he said, yeah, well, what high school did you go to? And he said, well, I moved out of here when I was a kid. So the motherfucker said, you ain't from Oakland. <laughs> motherfucker. Just because you lived here at one point in time and you left and now you want to come back and claim here. Because that's not how it works. That's not how it works, bro. Mm-hmm. What high school did you go to? So whatever high school you went to, that's the city that you're from. Win that city over. You'll never win Atlanta if you can't win St. Louis. There ain't that many clubs in St. Louis. And then there ain't my, that many DJs in St. Louis. That's real. And yeah, then my agreed. second thought is that 85 to 90% of this is digital now anyway. So it doesn't really matter where you're based. What are you doing on your social media? What are you, how consistently are you dropping music? That That's really what's building artists today is your consistency and the awareness that are people that people are getting from your digital footprint. Yeah. And you don't need to be based in Atlanta or New York or Miami. You just need to have a really good Wi-Fi connection and be able to edit shit. That's really what it is. I wonder how many records from outside of this city are broken in this city from DJs from this city. I wonder how many times you can go to, I know there was a time when they was doing that when it was a whole lot of New York records and different records from different regions. But I'm just curious. I'm curious to know how many of the DJs in Atlanta break records to Atlantans for artists not from Atlanta. And when I say break, I don't mean introduce. I mean break the record in this market. Every record that's hot, that happens with. If it's hot, they're not breaking it. It's already hot. It's I see broken. You, you don't get record breaker status by playing records. It doesn't work like that. You're playing a hot record, then you played a hot record. Right. Did you play it first? Did you play it for 45 minutes and lock yourself in the radio station when nobody else was playing it? You broke the record. Got it. But if you played it <laughs> because it. Joe Blow said it was hot, now, Joe Blow in St. Louis calls me and says, Kingpin, I got the hottest record in St. Louis. I need you to get it to the guys in Atlanta. I'm going to take it to the guys in Atlanta, so forth and so on. That DJ is responsible for connecting those dots. But that doesn't mean that the DJ, you understand? I, don't, I didn't break the record. I didn't play the record. That breaking record shit is very, very particular, man. It's very particular. Anybody can stake a claim to it. Oh, I sent out an email blast. So I'm one of the originators of that record. And yeah. I introduced it first into the marketplace. And no. Yeah. And and because being a break record means getting the contract. It means being able to charge what you want. That's why everybody wants that title. Yeah. Because when you, when you tell somebody you're a record breaker, God forbid somebody calls you a bona fide record breaker. Because the minute you become a bona fide record breaker, you can write a check for that service. But the minute you can't break a record, that check goes away. Mm-hmm. And then you fall right off to quick. the wayside real fucking fast. fast. Right quick. And that's why it's that's so important like to maintain these relationships. And yeah. therein lies the problem with going into a different city is, I do a lot of street team work. So I have to go into constantly cities and plant seeds. But the problem comes in is that when, when we leave, are those seeds being nurtured? Is the artist right. and their team watering those up. seeds, Correct. following up? Correct. Did you like the last record? No. Do you want a new record? Do you got some drops? Hey, man, I just seen you unlaunch your T-shirt line, but I need a 3X with your cash app. Like, those are the things that are going to get you solidified in somebody else's city more so Oh, than it's a relationship. In. Everything in this business is based on relationships. And and I'll get, I'm a first-hand proof of that. We should do an episode on that. Oh, we have. Yeah, I, I can definitely testify. <laughs> had, it, had it not been for the relationships that I've been able to build over the last umpteen years, then nothing that I wanted to do in California would have went the way I wanted exactly. to. Exactly. And everything exactly. in California went the way that we wanted it to. It may not have... And some. All of the sizzle, but everything <laughs> that we wanted to go out. We, yeah. we got to the venue. We had four passes. We walked in with 17 people. All it cost me was two bottles of water. True story. And tell them where we parked. Right the oh, fucking so front. We, we, get to the, we, we show up to this festival, this block party festival, and we find cones. So I take the cones and block off the entire front half of the block just to see if people will respect cones. And cheat coders, people they respect did. cones more than they, <laughs> the police parked on the outside of the cones so much so that when we got there, I pulled up and squeezed in behind them. the police officer looked at me like I was crazy. Like, Bitch, I'm the one that put these cones here. Yep. So... <laughs> Those are the relationships that you need. Those are being able to go into the city and hit Arch, hit Gary Archer, hit DJ Slowpoke, hit DJ D Sharp, pulling up on Fab. Those are all, I live in Atlanta. 
I haven't been to Oakland in 10 years. But I went to Oakland and it was like I never skipped a beat. Right. It was like they had seen me just yesterday, whatever you need, Kingpin. And and it it that is why we do what we do. Yes. Mm-hmm. That is why I was out there hanging posters in 115 degree sun and somebody hung, BB Kingpin. And I'm like, man, who the fuck is that? I'm glad a bitch don't owe me no money. Right. Bitch could have walked up on me and killed me quick if I owed him some money. I'm glad this face Gucci in the streets, buddy. But I say all that to say this. Without me being out there doing that, do you guys take what we say as gospel? Because everybody that's seen it said, holy shit, you motherfuckers are really out here. Oh, you think I'm the only one? Here, let me go. Let me come introduce you to the GOAT also standing out here in 115 degree weather in a black t-shirt dying from a fucking chest infection. She's also out here. So those Sick are the things dog. that the people need to see so that what we tell you is one thing. What we do sounds eerily familiar to what we say. Yeah. And that's because we want to prove that this shit works if you work it. That's the beauty about the cheat code, and that's the beauty about the music business. You don't need a whole bunch of money. You just need a whole bunch of willpower. Cheat code. Get a coffee cup. <laughs>